What's good, everybody? Welcome to the Pull Up and Chat. My name is BJ Matthews, aka B Jizzle. Before we get started, follow us on the YouTube page, the Pull Up Basketball Podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Twitter, TikTok, the Pull Up Basketball Podcast. Like, share, subscribe, all of our YouTube videos. Let's get it popping. All right, look, this conversation, man, is going to stem from last night. Um, actually, an entire week and a half um, of playoff basketball. Um, um, pertaining to a certain uh, player. You know what I mean? So, this player obviously is on the rise right now. Obviously, um, got a lot of buzz this season. Obviously, is exciting to watch. Obviously, um, has been compared to some of the, you know, all-time greats such as, you know, Allen Iverson, um, Derrick Rose, um, Russell Westbrook to an extent. Um, very exciting to watch. Steve Francis. Um, John ja Morant of the Memphis Grizzlies, the young all-star, 22-year-old from the Memphis Grizzlies. Is John ja Morant overrated? Is John ja Morant overrated? Just go on and ask it. You know what I mean? Let's get it popping. All right, listen, man. Um, I'm not a big fan of that term overrated. I don't use it much. I don't really even like to even bring that word into conversations because I think that certain people, you have to give certain people time to settle into who they really are and certain people settle in at different times of their life. Um, everybody's path is different. So when you put the term overrated and underrated, you have to kind of have, um, you have to kind of know where the person is in life or on a specific uh, sport or whatever. So I don't like to use the term overrated. But in this particular case, we're going to talk about it because, you know, it's it's very easy to get caught up in recency bias. It's very easy to get caught up in the moments. It's very easy to get caught up in things where, um, you know, the masses in the media actually makes the 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 fan base and the NBA base, you know, believe into something that can also that can be, you know, a narrative down the line. You can put something on somebody very early and then the next season they can they can fall off or drop off you know what i mean so pretending to ja i took the liberty of watching this season of ja morant um you know he wasn't really making real buzz until this this year because memphis you know really wasn't a team to really look out for you know the second seed in the in the western conference um They've had a lot of success this season, so that's what put Ja on the map. He just won the Most Improved Player of the Year award, so that's congrats to his hard work. Um, so yeah, that that's what it is with with Ja Morant at the end of the day. Um, now I looked at this playoff series, man, and there was some things that um really highlighted something that I think a lot of people who support Ja and who actually have you know where they want to rank them they need to put in effect because a lot of things that i saw was like very eye popping eye opening this series to me was the best player on the court was not john moran it was desmond bain desmond bain to me was the best player in this series brandon clark um also contributed a heavy um heavy way especially in those last two games in game five and six on the boards uh, getting put backs and stuff like that. Um, so it was a lot of things that um, other players did that made job ja, that covered up for Ja. Um, and not not saying that's a bad thing because that's a teammate. You're supposed to cover for that person. But I'm just saying, like, for them, to, for the people keeps um, and the masses keep saying that this dude is compared to Derrick Rose and, and, and Allen Iverson. I have to go to this to this uh, to the to the evidence. John Morant doesn't have a reliable jump shot. He doesn't have a, re a reliable pull-up shot. His mid-range game, he does not have one. His game is all straight to the basket or shoot the now the, the three-point shot. He just now started getting a three-point shot last year, which he worked hard on. But he's a one-dimensional type of player right now. Let me just read off some of his uh, uh, field goal attempts and makes in, the, in this last series. Six games straight. 4 for 14 from last night, 9 for 22 in game 5, 4 for 13 in game 4, 
5 for 18 in game 3, 9 and 16 for game 2, 8 for 18 in game 1. So that means that only out of all six of those games, he shot one game over 50%. And I'm watching the games too. I'm, so I'm seeing this type of shots he's taking. All his shots are getting to the basket and, and trying to, you know, either finish with a layup or try to dunk on somebody. He's obviously a, a physical freak. You know what I'm saying? You can't take that from him. But the problem is, is that he relies so much on his athleticism that when teams key in on it, like in the playoffs that they're going to do, it's like he doesn't have a second gear. Are you going to really ask John Morant for three, four uh, uh, constant games to, you know, be able to have an outside jump shot? I don't think you are. I wouldn't feel comfortable doing that if I was the coach. There was points in this series where they had to put John Morant on the bench because he was killing the momentum of the game. And Desmond Bain and Tyus Jones and Brandon Clark and um, Dylan Brooks were were carrying up the load. Remember, this the same team went 23-2 and two without him this season. And I was wondering how they went so good without their best player. But then I seen why they played so well here because Tyus Jones, in my opinion, is a better point guard than John Moran. When I say point guard, I mean he makes better decisions. He's able to include more people in his offense. Um, and they just run smoother. Now, give John credit. He actually had four games where he had over 10 assists in this series. So he definitely was given uh, passing the ball and making an assist. Play. But that, again, goes to, you know, other players hitting shots. John Morant, for you to go five out of six games less than 50%, just shows me again that you have a hard time being efficient and, and taking quality shots. Like everything is one way to the basket, to the rim. You know what I mean? I actually had a post up where I put, um, I would take Donovan Mitchell over John Morant, even now. You give Donovan Mitchell that Memphis team that grinds out on defense um, all around with uh, Desmond Bain, Dylan Brooks, Zaire Williams, uh, Jared Jackson, um, those guys around him, then he can do what Ja does, which is play uh, play strictly offense. Because Ja don't have to play really defense. He'll get blocks, you know what I'm saying, like on the weak side or something like that. But he's not a, a guy who has to really play defense because his teammates make up for that. Donovan doesn't have that on Utah. They're a defensive liability outside of Rudy Gobert. Royce O'Neal will play defense a little bit. Um, but guys like Bogdanovich and guys like Jordan Clarkson, guys like um, uh, who else? Um, losing train of thought. Um just, just their guard play. Don't they don't have much defense on that that Utah team? They were top five, ironically, last season, but this year they fell off. Memphis has a great deep team, where Ja can have nights like this, as y'all see, and he still they still be able to, you know, what I'm saying prevail. So, all in all, I'm just saying, like, I think pipe down on the comparisons to Derrick Rose and Allen Iverson, because let me tell you something about. Uh, let me just finish my point with Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell, what he did, what he did his first season, bro, Ja hasn't even done. For him to take down a prime Oklahoma City team his first year in the, in the NBA, aside from, to me, he has a better overall game. He has a better shot. He has a better handle. He has a better, he's a better defender. The only thing that Ja really does really is play make, and he's just as athletic as Ja. I know that's maybe hard for people to understand, but Donovan Mitchell has a 42-inch vertical. I think Ja has a 44. So they both are very athletic guys, but and also Donovan Mitchell has a better NBA body. Ja Morant's very, very skinny and frail. He needs to put a little bit more mass and muscle on because he takes all them hits, man. It's going to take a toll on him later in his career. I think Allen Iverson said that um, you have to you know, learn how to, you know what I'm saying, not take as many hits. So he has to learn how to be more skilled. He has to get that mid-range down. But let me go to the next point. Um, we've seen guys like John Morant, such as D. Rose, such as Russell Westbrook, like, such as Steve Francis, such as John Wall, who are super athletic, supremely athletic. But they haven't. They didn't really develop much of a, a jump shot. Steve Francis had a jump shot. I'll give him that. He had a mid-range shot more. Um D. Rose, he developed a jump shot more later on in his career. But guys like Russell Westbrook and John Wall, you guys see where they're at in the NBA. They don't really have much of a job because they can't really shoot consistently. 
And I hope John doesn't fall in that same that same uh, stratosphere in that shade where he doesn't really he relies so much on his athleticism that he doesn't really get his 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 jump shot consistent. He also very to me he's very turnover prone. Like you can you can rattle job like he's very turnover prone. And um, the way I saw this Minnesota series, bro, honestly Minnesota they should have won this series four to one. If you want, if we're gonna be honest about it, they gave up three double digit leads in the fourth quarter, a twenty six lead in the third uh, third quarter in game three, a twenty five point lead in uh, game three. They gave up a twelve point lead in game five, and they gave up a ten point lead last night in game uh, uh, game six. So if you go up against a team like Golden State, they're not going to make those mistakes. They're going to make you pay on the other end, and they're not going to be so defensively irresponsible like Minnesota was. You know what I'm saying? So um, I think a lot of people just look at highlights and let's look at, you know, what Josh just so spectacular, which he is, definitely. And I had that same complex with D. Rose because I was, you know, around that age where I got so in awe of his highlights and his, you know, his crossovers and stuff like that. But now that you get older, you actually watch the game and look at a more logical approach that I'm like, man, D Rose really, he was kind of one dimensional. And I think once he got injured, it's kind of a blessing disguise disguise because I don't think he would have been able to, he would have slowed down. I think he would still try to play fast over the rim. Um, not really have much of an outside or mid range jump shot, not focus on the fundamentals. Um, so yeah, man. I mean, just pipe down on all the the, the comparison talk because Allen Iverson, y'all realize he, sh he dude, he may have shot forty five percent from the field of his career, but the dude averaged almost damn near thirty points in an era probably the most probably the most physical era of all time. His career averaged almost thirty points a game. That's it. against that that defense back in the uh, early two thousands. You know what I'm saying? Mid-2000s, late-2000s, bro. Come on, man. Like, that that right there is... He... he no. No. Um, I was waiting for Jada to really erupt this series. Um, but I'm just... I was watching the games. I'm like, dude, this guy needs to develop a mid-range shot. This guy needs to develop a pull-up shot. This guy needs to stop being so turnover-prone. And he needs to allow the game to come more to him. Um, I think he's 22 right now, going on 23, so... Um, he's still very young, um, but he got a lot of holes in his game, bro. I don't know if people understand what I'm saying, but he has a lot of holes in his game. So we'll see what happens. He seems like he's a hard worker. He seems he seems like he's ready to you know get better. So we'll see what happens in the summertime. But hopefully he doesn't fall into that same realm with those other guys I just named. Um, but like I said, continue your pull up and see pull up a chair, pull up. Peace out of here, like swim well.